Good names are taken podcast, and there's no Blake. It's just me. I don't know how this is going to go, but I figured since there were so many people waiting to watch that we would at least, or I would at least attempt it. So let's catch everybody up on what exactly is going on right now. Blake always has 10 to 15 minutes of a delay because he can never figure out his microphone or his camera. And tonight he said, I quit. I'm going to watch Red Dawn. So then I spent the next 10 minutes while you guys were waiting with his young son trying to over FaceTime, get everything situated, and it did not work. So maybe, just maybe, his whole setup is just as aggravating as he says it is, and it's just not him being an idiot. All right? So, like I said, not sure exactly how this is going to go. First time going live by myself. The topic tonight, pretty simple. Foods in the Friday the 13th franchise. And I'll get into more of that later. I had planned to sit here and, br- and brag. Yeah, brag on Blake about his 11 day fast that I'm sure he's on social media uh, bragging about. But Blake has had not had anything to eat in 11 days. So he would have got on here and told us how awesome he was. I would have told him how stupid he was. I would have ate something in front of him. But instead, he's sitting there watching Red Dawn, which brings up a better question. Which Red Dawn is he watching? Is it the original or is it the new one? Don't know. All right, so I see some people trickling in. And like I said, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. This is a weird topic anyway. Foods and Friday the 13th. It's Blake's topic. It's not even my topic that I could just spin off the top of my head. This was all Blake's idea. And now here I am stuck with this. So let's get right into it. Let's see who's in the chat. Looks like Allie's there. Uh, Yeah, we're doing some different things as far as leading into the live streams to see how that goes. Anyway. Friday the 13th, you guys know, I guess I should go ahead and say it, even though he's not here. We plan to bring you Friday the 13th content every Friday until we get a proper sequel. And I'm not talking about this series that looks like it's going to be terrible. All right. So Nick Push is here live from Amsterdam. Awesome topic. Thanks, Nick. And Darren from the Slaughtered Lamb is here watching this impending doom. We're all behind you, buddy. So. Go check out Darren's latest video today. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. Now I'm going to have to check out that movie. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Nothing fancy. The reason we brought this up is I don't think many people are talking about it on YouTube. We try to pick the things that are not being discussed. 
We don't think the bathroom scenes are being discussed. Food's definitely not being discussed. It's mostly rankings and who's your favorite Jason, best mask, all that stuff. We'll eventually get into that. But right now, we're trying to be as creative as we can with it. So let me get this off of here real quick and explain the process. I'm going to talk about food scenes from the Friday the 13th franchise, from the original all the way up until Jason goes to hell. I'm not sure there were any food scenes in Jason X and the food scenes in the remake sucked and I'm not watching Freddy versus Jason ever again. All right. So here we go. We're going to start with the original. So one thing I find fascinating about Friday the 13th is the fact that we're introduced to Annie at the beginning of the movie. Okay. And Annie, usually when you're introduced to the first person, the first person that you see is going to be the final girl. Annie is not the final girl, but she gets to meet all the weirdos in town. And the first thing that she does, besides petting a weird dog on the street, is walk into this diner right here. Diner slash convenience store. And the reason I say that is if you look over the top of the hat right here, you've got a bunch of like love novels with Fabio and whoever. So she walks in and immediately you get the scene from that Pee Wee's Big Adventure bar from where they all turn and look at her right here. So I'm going to go back. If you notice, it looks like we have some type of pastries right here by this mongoloid type guy. You've got something right there, like snack. We call them snack cakes in the South. Right here, you've got what looks like uh, crackers on, on the counter. And then, like I said, right here, you can't really tell what exactly he's eating. And if Blake was here, the whole point of this stream would have been like, all right, Blake, what do you think this guy ordered? So since he's not here, the only people I can ask that are the people in the chat. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on X or you're watching on Instagram, our first time live on Instagram, by the way, doing a show, put it in the chat. What do you think this guy right here ordered at this diner? What do you think he's eating? Like, first off, he looks like a hamburger guy. Hamburger, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, and French fries. Boom, he's out of there. Nothing gut bustery because he's driving a truck. You don't want to pull over every five miles down the road to find a shitter. Okay. The chick over here is what makes him right beside him is what makes me think this might be a convenience store because she's reading the paper. So I really don't understand that. <laughs> Already coming in. Uh, we got Ali saying, think he ordered a bacon cheeseburger. Always a good one. Here we go. Like, I don't know who this is. CD scale and models. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the chat pie and coffee. And that's actually a pretty good one. Usually in these movies, especially set around this time, 1980, you see people going into a diner just to order a piece of pie, which now if somebody goes into a diner to order just a piece of pie, they're probably a pedo or something like that. It's really weird when that happens. So pie and coffee is actually pretty good. Darren says some shitty bologna. He didn't spell it right. So there you go. Bologna is getting a bad rap. If you don't know the story behind Darren making fun of me all the time about the bologna, it's because I bought a tube of bologna and smoked it on my smoker. It was terrible. But fried bologna sandwiches are great if you've ever had them. Let's see. Taco <laughs> Burrito Belux. He said, CD Scale Miles is saying she's a tuna melt lady. I, I don't think, I think she ordered a coffee, to be honest with you. I think she went straight coffee. And the real hobo on the far end down there, I'm thinking he didn't have enough money to pay for anything. So if you've ever seen the original Roadhouse, he's probably just slept there all day. Let's see. Debbie Death Ray in the chat. It's a diner convenience store. They used to combine those back in the day, right? I don't know. Did they? That's the first I've heard of that. I don't know. Davey, if you're going to come with any info about other movies, the answer is always going to be the same. I don't know. So anytime, the most common thing here is, is going to be camp foods. All right. So, and diner foods, especially when we get to part eight, that is just gross. Now, the reason I have this picture of this beautiful woman right here is for two reasons. And it's down here. It's called Marlboro's and Marlboro Lights. So this technique, this definitely has to be a convenience store because they're selling the piss out of cigarettes. And I just wanted to put this in here for a couple of reasons. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you're going to see Lance's, which is a brand of uh, crackers. 
So it's snack crackers. You don't see snack crackers for sale in just a strict restaurant. And plus, this guy is dealing with some kind of gigantism or something. <laughs> All right. So this was the pop, Blake. Obviously, everybody in this stream right now knows all about Friday the 13th. And you know that there's a scene that everybody complains about, except us, that they cut up a snake. Where the hell have you been? Talking shit, huh? <laughs> Did you just quit? You just quit and walk out. You have no idea how and that system he has in there is man everything is plugged in and it says nothing is plugged in and then it says we you can't use your uh webcam because too many see this is the great thing about this right now because i want to hear it because if he would have paid attention to the beginning of the show i agree that the system look it looks like michael scott's computer i've never seen anything like this people his son flipped the camera around. So there are 32,000 icons on that desktop. I don't understand who even still has a desktop to be completely honest. You can get a laptop for a hundred bucks at Walmart to stream off of. It has two ports, two USB ports. I know because I'm doing it right now. It's a Dell. <laughs> Dude, you're getting a Dell. Look. You want to brag about your 11 day fast real quick? No, I don't. It's nobody's business. Are you wanting to stay here with me and finish this show or are you done? That's up to you. I just, well, I, 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 I just realized uh, that you went live. I didn't get to see the intro or anything. And, it uh, was very awkward and very weird. There was nobody for me to talk to. I'm not good at this unless I have somebody to bounce uh, stuff off of. You've got to be here to be funny. Uh, I was going to be forced to talk to the chat. You know how much I hate that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it was a terrible situation. And plus, this whole show, Blake, was your idea. And it's set up for me and you to bounce ideas off. Like, you've already missed the Mongoloid comment I have written down all day. It was gold, Jerry. It was gold. Mongoloid. I said Mongoloid. <laughs> that's what i needed <laughs> all right you ready to go and look this right here blake i had this for you we're talking about food in the friday 13th franchise yeah and i'm talking about when they cut the snake up here and i was going to have a great conversation with you about you know people actually eat snake you do you think they ate this snake i'm sure they did i mean if you watch naked and afraid snakes like one of the most common meals on that show so yeah you just can't overcook it what Darren say? Go to bed, Darren. 2 a.m. <laughs> he says, I feel like I'm encroaching on a domestic violence situation here. Yeah. Blake, they're all happy you're here. Apparently, I, I, was, I was doing great. Well, I can't I great. You know if anybody's talking trash. If Nick Push is in a swing in Amsterdam. Nick Push says he's eating hash in Amsterdam right now. You know, I knew Nick Push was going he to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. <laughs> Then I saw on the Yahoo uh, News today that sexual assaults are up 35% over the last three days in Amsterdam. So that, co up. that right. coincides with Nick Bush being there. All right, Blake. So there's the snake scene. Let's move on. The last scene from Friday the 13th, part one. Steve Christie in the diner, Blake. Two and a quarter is what he owes her. Two and a quarter. So what did he buy for two and a quarter? Obviously, we've got coffee right there. Okay. What kind of diner order is Steve Christie? Uh, burger, fries, and probably one of those muffins there. You think he went muffin? I would go muffin. I mean, muffin's the dog, too. In Friday 13th, <laughs> so. I think Steve Christie is a sandwich coffee guy. I think he's worried about what he looks like. He's wearing those uh, cut-off Daisy Dukes and his gang bandana. He's trying to look good for what's-her-face, whose name I can't remember, Alice Sweet Alice. So I don't think he's packing a lot of stuff. And, and plus, he's been goofing off all damn day while they've supposedly been working. Here's another thing, Blake, I want to talk to you real quick while I was watching these movies. He's having all these guys paint, and then he says there's a storm coming in. 
I mean, what the hell's up with that? Hey, stupid. <laughs> Moving on to part two, Blake. This is already <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I love that you got this shot. Well, this is the only shot in her. <laughs> there's, there's like three shots in this movie that that, that I want to talk about, and this is the first one. This is it. What's her name? Annie? Alice? What's her damn name? From the first Alice. one, is it Alice? Somebody yeah. in the chat, help me out. The the girl, I think Alice. Okay, so when she opens up her fridge, Mrs. Voorhees's head's there, but. What is this right here? One, this is amazing. This is amazing. The only thing I can figure. Y'all give me just a second. All right. You there, bud? The only thing I can figure out here is I don't understand what she's got in her fridge. It's like two cartons of milk, old school carton of milk too. If you guys uh, are paying attention and she's got, are those bagels? Help me in the chat. Are those bagels over there to the side? I don't, I don't know what that is. I mean, the Southern part of me wants to say those are hamburger buns, but, and some V8. So obviously she's went off the deep end. She's drawing those weird pictures She's drinking buttermilk. Looks like uh, possibly two sodas in the back. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, definitely not getting the best nutrients in the world. And Blake is still here staring at me with no volume. Hey, Blake. So I don't know whether to leave him there or not. I think I'm just going to get rid of him. Applesauce. Where did you see applesauce at? That is applesauce. Good call by Allie right here. That is applesauce right here behind this container. The real question is, what does she have in this yellow container right here? This is a fabulous uh, topic and stream that we got going on. Davey says some type of casserole. What do you think, Blake? Uh, you got to go with like leftover macaroni and cheese, maybe some leftover mashed potatoes and gravy, something like that. I mean, you, the reason I'm leaning toward mashed potatoes and gravy is you got the bread on top. Well, that well, I think those are bagels, and I think you got some kind of lasagna right here. It's definitely lasagna. Maybe like a hamburger helper. <laughs> Don't know. Definitely uh, awful. Whatever it is. What about Moving that head, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I still find it fascinating. If we can get off the food for just a second, Jason's walking around with a head like like Bilal. I hey, mean, it's B eight. Yeah, we talked about the V8 and the salad dressing, and then Allie caught the applesauce, and we're dealing with buttermilk, real milk, and could be cranberry juice back there, could be tab. I don't know. Uh, CD Scale of Models is saying those are Linder bagels. So you know what Linder's bagels are, Blake? You're in the business. Uh, Yeah. Next one's the most uh, – would you say this is the most iconic scene in the franchise, Blake? The campfire scene? Yeah, either that or the tent scene in, uh, goes in part seven or no part nine. You're right. Yeah. So this is probably the best scene. And this is one besides Steve Christie in the diner. This is one of the scenes that makes makes this a really good topic because this is the epitome of a campfire. This is the epitome of out camping because you got all of these 40 year olds and they've got their sticks yeah. with their marshmallows on it. They're making their s'mores. They're telling their ghost stories. The only thing missing are possibly some hot dogs on a stick, Blake. Well, the funny thing about this scene is this is where you find out March really handicapped because the whole time his foot's in the fire. <laughs> also, if you pay attention, one thing I noticed is when Ted comes jumping out of the bushes, they all knock the guy in the wheelchair over as they're running away, like he, like he'd just be left there and they'd turn him over in there. Yeah. But no, we got marshmallows right here in this scene. Blake, what's your go-to s'more? Are you just uh, eating a marshmallow off the stick guy? Or do you like, actually like to make s'mores? I, I, I actually like to make s'mores. Give me the cracker. Give me the chocolate. Give me uh, you know, some people do the whole Reese's thing. Like give me all of it. I love Okay. It. Explain the Reese's thing. Okay. So you go graham cracker, you go marshmallow, you go Reese's pe uh, Reese's peanut butter cup. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. 
Oh man, when it's all melted, it's 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 fantastic, and it's only like two hundred grams of sugar, so you should be okay per bite. Right, let me scroll up a little bit and see what I've missed. Somebody said I'm going with a roast. That was Allie. Okay, I don't think I've missed anything. But Nick just brought up a good thing. Did nobody wear comfy clothes forty years ago? And if you guys knew that Nick pushes up at three a.m. in Amsterdam, uh, thanks for still being here, Nick. You're up later than Darren. So I think all these clothes are comfortable. I mean, the chick over there that Jason drags her naked body back to the shack, she's wearing a, a turtleneck like Darren's been wearing in some of those episodes. Uh, wheelchair guy's got a starter jacket or something on right there. Paul's wearing the double shirt. I mean, it all looks comfortable to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, maybe it was an awful question. I don't know. So there you go. And then we move on to this right here, Blake. <laughs> hot dogs on a grill so you think these guys are i'm always tempted to say that they're getting ready to open the camp in part two but they're not they're training counselors to go out to be camp counselors at different camps all across the country so why don't they just have a standard grill around what ted's doing right here is he's throwing logs on a fire to burn these hot dogs that hot dog closest to us is kind of cut off. That's exactly how I like mine. I want it black, baby. So you're a burnt wiener guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can eat hot dogs any which way you want to give them to me. I can eat them raw out of the pack on the bun. I can eat them half, you know. Do you prefer grilled or steamed, Blake? That's a real question when it comes to hot dogs. In the chat, guys, do you prefer grilled or steamed hot dogs? I don't mind either, but I mean, if I, I would choose grilled, I think. And I'm old school. Like, give me a fork and I'll ho hold it over the stove and burn it like that. Yeah, we used to do that all the time. Yeah. The one thing I thought about this scene right here, Blake, is and CD scales them all saying he likes his grilled. Nick Push is saying grilled, no doubt. So far, nobody's saying steamed. Uh, Davey is, hold on, let me pull it up. Wrong button. It's weird that they definitely, okay, what is definitely recently killed Muffin and then just walks into the cabin at the end of the movie. What the hell's going on here? So uh, Davey is starting his own angles in the chat. Davey, it's real simple. Muffin never shows up at the end of the movie. That's all a dream sequence. Muffin is dead in hell. Ah, Tommy coming in steamed. The correct answer in the chat, guys, is any way, as long as they're cooked a little bit. There's no such thing as a bad hot dog, all right? The funny thing about this scene, Blake, is it's the scene immediately after Muffin walks up to Jason's feet. So I thought, hey, hot dog, no? Okay, so as we're carrying on, Blake, here's Muffin in the woods. He got hungry. <laughs> so is this a – guts definitely beat if you look over here to the left. So is this a situation where Jason Voorhees ripped this dog apart or did he eat her? That's the reason I'm including Muffin in on the food. I think he may have ate her. I think so too. If you remember, Blake, and I was going to ask you this before this whole damn stream went haywire. When Paul's telling the story about Jason, he says he's out there living on animals and vegetation. What the hell does he mean by vegetation? Because when he says vegetation, I just picture Jason over been over at the waist eating grass like a damn cow. I'm sure they got apple trees and bananas and uh, that kind of crap out there. Can you picture Jason eating a banana off the tree like at Olivia Munn, Jeff? I hadn't seen that. I can, can you picture uh, Jason just biting into poor Muffin's guts right here and eating her? He didn't eat a lot of her. It seems like Jason would be cooking her, right? You're not going to find many food scenes like this in the Halloween franchise either. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is Harold getting his mayonnaise and mustard sandwich. Well, that and the fact they didn't have the balls to show us the he got hungry in part one. I want to see the dog. I had to wait the Halloween kills to see the dog. Get out of here. Nick says he ate Mark too, so there you go. And the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the next one. We're going on to part three, Blake. And before anybody tries to fact check me in the chat, I do understand uh, understand that there was a food scene when Paul finally tells everybody who's punished and, you know, go on out and get you one last night on the town because it's really finna get tough here at this camp counselor training. 
So they were eating what looked to be hamburgers and, and beans, Blake. And then at the bar, they were doing nothing but drinking. So there you go. Yes, boss. <laughs> I contacted uh, some people today and I was like, why are there no scene? Why is there no clear video of Harold eating in Friday 13th Part 3? Why do I have to pull up the Max app on my computer and take a picture of it with my phone and then piece it together like this. So it looks like crap. So Friday the 13th part three, we ease into that and right off the bat. We get some disgusting eating scenes because Harold and Edna, I think that's her name. They own some kind of convenience store that is also a grocery store and they've got animals and God knows what crawling and shitting all over it. And as Harold walks through to the left, Blake it's the first and the debut of Mr. Peanut as Harold takes a handful of peanuts out of there and eats that, puts it down, and then opens up the orange juice, takes a drink out of that, and puts it back down. So I'm a big fan of peanuts. Like I don't blame him for getting a handful of them. Every time I see peanuts in a store or in a grocery store, I want to buy them. I love them. I can eat my weight in peanuts, and I weigh 345 pounds. So that's a lot of peanuts, Blake. Are you an orange juice guy? Yes, I am. I love orange juice with or without the pulp. I love it. That's a good question. In the chat, orange juice, no pulp, mid pulp, lots of pulp. I think I can drink it anyway, Blake. Even Sunny D, which is not technically orange juice. That sort of looks like what Harold is uh, drinking right here is Sunny D, but I'm not sure Sunny D was out by this time. Sunny D is not orange juice, but I love it. It was always felt like a treat, Blake. When we were kids that we got Sunny D instead of the uh, great value uh, orange juice. That's right. I'm old school. I love the orange Tropicana carton. Uh, I love orange juice. All right. Darren's saying he could have totally watched a spinoff with this dude. I think that might have been one of the saddest movies ever, to be completely honest, because this guy has a horrible life. He's got a wife that's telling him he's too fat and he weighs about a buck 75 like we talked last week. He can't, he's having to sneak around and eat and be happy. He's having to eat on the shitter, which is like a cardinal sin. In the chat, if you eat while using the bathroom, let us know with a yes or a no because you put yes, it's ridiculous, You're gross. Banned. I know a guy that takes uh, that has taken a bag of double cheeseburgers and four Gatorades to the toilet because he knew he was going to be there for a while. That is a true story. Okay, so definitely don't want to watch a spinoff. I'm going to have to disagree there because I think that spinoff ends with a murder-suicide, Blake. Uh, yeah, the wife is a little harsh. She is sexy, but uh, a little harsh on him. I mean, he's not fat. He's got bad hair. Um, And what if, what if he skipped dinner that night and he's just looking for snack? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Give the guy a break. Let him eat. She she looks like the type of person that would make sure her man has supper every night. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Well, it's the eighties. You have to, or you get beat. Uh, the guy, Darren, the guy who played Harold is also from Saturday. I'm not Saturday night live from, uh, what's the name of it? Blake with Al Bundy married with children. <laughs> hey, the kids in the chat, iPad and coffee. in the shitter. <laughs> That's awful. I'm just banned him. All right, moving on to the next scene, Blake. It wasn't enough to eat all that stuff. He has to eat the fish food, too. Just to hammer across to the, the people watching the movie just how hungry he is. All right, and then he spits it out because of the bayfly eggs. Do you know what bayfly eggs is, Blake? I don't, but listen, there's an argument to be made in Harold's defense here. Uh, you wonder what fish food tastes like, right? And you can sit there and shake your head no, but anybody has been around it, you wondered it. Just like with the whole dog food thing and the dog food biscuits. You know, we've seen clips or movies of people taking a bite of a dog biscuit. It's the same situation. He just wanted to see what the all the fuss was about. He didn't like it, did he? Or did he like it? No, he, he was perfectly okay with it. He, like, went two or three more times till he started reading the ingredients. And he's like, ah, bayfly eggs, that, that, and like that right there. I mean, it's stupid. Moving on to this, we've got, is his name Joe? Blake is a, you know, we wanted to kill off Ralph in part two just to bring back a different Ralph in part three. And this is kind of crazy, Blake, because this takes place just a couple of days after, or the day after part two. Am I correct in that timeline? The town's full of crazies. 
Nick's correcting me. It's not Job. It's Abel. This is Abel. Thanks, Nick. So Abel is laying out there in the woods. That means we've got two weirdos that patrol Crystal Lake Woods. We've got this guy and we've got Ralph. And Ralph gets strangled. And this guy is given body parts by Jason. Are we supposed to think that these are body parts given to him by Jason or body parts that he found off somebody Jason killed, Blake? Because it's really disturbing he to did. think about him finding a dead body and digging this eye out. Whose eye is it is the question. Rick's from the, <laughs> from the movie. Oh, there you go. You're right. They filmed it afterwards, and they just put it in wrong. <laughs> now, the reason I put this down, Blake, is I'm pretty sure this uh, piece of crap ate this eye after they drove off because he's got nothing else, nothing else to eat. Uh-oh. Yeah, you can watch I'm podcasting right now. What? Can you turn it down? But you just podcast in Basil. Oh, you go. That's She's true. all over you. That's true. I'll podcast. All right. Okay. Do you say you see what's going on? <laughs> just keep it down over there, okay? I'm gonna podcast over here right now. Uh, Nick Bush is saying it's the eye of the pervert from part two. Which pervert, though? They were all perverts. Yeah. He's probably talking about Scott, the sexy one. Okay. So CD Scale and Models says Fox looks like Vanessa Del Rio. I'm going to assume that's uh, Mexican. I really don't know, Blake. Uh, Yeah, I agree with him. You're on the move. Tell us where you're going, Blake. I'm going from the living room to the dining room uh, because... Daughter number two is about to turn on Bluey, and it's going to get really loud in there. What if we just stream Bluey? How long before they uh, cut us off? Bluey? Yeah, Bluey. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the scene right here, Blake, with Vera and Shelly in the store. Uh, you get food in the background. We got some Cheez-Its, and it looks like if somebody in the chat can help me right over her shoulder right there, is that cereal? Or is that crackers? Uh, down here to the lower right, we have some kind of, uh, I want to say, that's those uh, stuffed apple pies and cherry pies, Blake. I see 7-Up. I see a 7-Up ad. I do see a 7-Up ad in the back. Somebody's saying they see cheese puffs. That's what that is. That's Cheetos. Nick Push is bringing up food stamps and racism because Vera, who doesn't look anything but white, is asked by the cashier, are you going to pay with food stamps? Yeah. And apparently she is because she asked Shelly for the wallet. So that's kind of awkward right there. Total crazy scene right here, but I wanted to, I had to put it, Blake, just for the fact that we got some cheeses in the background. I'm not a big cheese it's guy, Blake. I hate them. I can't stand the taste of them. If I was starving, I would just starve to death. Yep. What's your take on goldfish? I hate goldfish. I hate cheeses. I hate goldfish. Can't stand them. Do you them. like goldfish? I don't like goldfish either. So. How about going to the boys' room, Blake? So this one right here, you're not going to be able to see, guys. This is my fault, but this is one of the weird 3D scenes that they put in Friday the 13th, part three. It's where the hippie that Nick Push loves so much that looks 59 years old, but is 24 in the movie. I think the guy was 24 in real life, too, but he just looks old. Is trying to catch the popcorn that's popping out of the pan. You can't really see it. It's a bad video, but I would have, I mean, that's the last food scene we get in that movie. So I used it. All right. Now moving on to Friday 13th, part four. Here's our favorite pervert, Axel. Real quick, this is another situation where I couldn't find the picture that I wanted. I searched throughout the internet and I didn't feel like taking a picture of the screen again, but I've got him drinking his coffee. But if anybody that's watched Friday 13th, part four, you know when they wheel Jason's dead body into the hospital, Axel is eating a sandwich and he drops the sandwich on top of Jason before he signs him in. And then he gets the sandwich, which is pretty freaking gross when you think about it. But I guess that's the point they were trying to hammer through. This guy's a wild man. He's gross. He's a pervert. He's sitting in the room with a dead body behind him watching chicks do jazzercise. 
he's not right in the head. I think that's what they were going for, Allie, with the uh, guy from part three. They were going for Cheech and Chong. And there was even discussions once upon a time for Jason to meet Cheech and Chong in a movie. That's the type of brain power we're dealing with with the Friday the 13th franchise is people that think, hey, maybe it's a good idea if Jason meets Cheech and Chong like Frankenstein met Albert and Costello. I think Police Academy was 84. That's a good call. Uh, Nick and Darren saying the same thing. Same year's Police Academy. Got to be close. I think Police Academy 1 was 1984. The same as Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Yeah, that's the guy from Police Academy. So he ate a sandwich. He drank some coffee. Not much to talk about. Now, I wish Blake was here for this one right here because this is everybody's favorite uh, favorite hitchhiker. It's everybody's favorite androgynous. Is that a word? Because I don't know if she's a guy or a girl. Obviously, she's a girl. Are you there, Blake? Yeah, I'm here, man. I was going to uh, – my, my, my stuff went out for a while. I was going to show you everything I got in my fridge. What do you got? Uh, I got some sausages. What a stream. I got, I got what a stream. I got jalapeno cheese. Uh, I got a nice piece of salmon here. CD scale of <laughs> models. He was also the rabbi in Seinfeld. Good call right there. More sausage. Fascinating on the sausage, Blake. What do you think about this chick right here, the hitchhiker that's eating the banana on the side of the road after somebody says, hey, honey, you got a sister? I love her. I want to see what's underneath that shirt, baby. <laughs> we all know what's underneath that shirt. A lot of shame. So she sits down after uh, she gets humiliated. And I've talked about it ad nauseum in the Friday the 13th Part 4 review that we did. What a humiliating experience it must be for the people that have to audition for the role of unattractive, fat slob on the side of the road. And then they actually have to be humiliated while eating a banana and then get stabbed right through the throat. And it is amazing that Blake is still going through his fridge. <laughs> and I had to put this because this is what everybody did when they saw her. Uh, I think they used the uh, banana as a little phallic uh, type analogy here that anytime you see this chick right here, it droops off and it falls. All right, so that's the banana scene, Blake. And that's pretty much, that wraps up the food scenes from Friday 13th Part 4. Yeah. I do have some more slides, but I just wanted to say the guys, uh, the party that's going on, it's mostly beer, okay? And I try not to do repeat foods, but I did have the Jarvis household here when Corey Feldman is getting uh, the sandwich action from his sister and his mom. I have, I have just so we could see the stuff right here that's on the table. You, know, you got the fruit. You got the mimosas. You got what looks like the bakery stuff right here. And Mrs. Jarvis, uh, so yeah, it's Mrs. Jarvis. Looks like she's got some kind of food in the pot back there if you guys are looking. And looks like tea going on the kettle, Blake. Let me unmute Blake just for a second. Yeah, I don't think Blake's going to have very good connection, people. But that's where we go. If you guys want to take a guess at what's in that box right there, you can throw it in the chat real quick. I honestly think they're coming in from town. That's going to be some type of cake right there. I really don't know. And like I said, that's going to wrap it up. Donuts. That's a good call. Maybe it was donuts. Let's see. I think George McFly ate in this movie, if you know what I mean. Marla Hooch. What a hitter. The fact that CD scale and models brought up Marla Hooch after I made a Marla Hooch joke earlier today is fantastic. I love it. Let's see what we got right here. Friday the 13th. I'm going to lean back a little bit, guys. Part five. Maybe the best food movie or the food scene movie in the franchise. We start off with Joey, who has a... Uh, if you were putting percentages on how retarded Joey is, we would say 75% retarded. Uh, give me your percentages in the chat, guys, of what you think. But 
He wanders out and he's eating chocolate. The first time we see chocolate bars in the franchise. And it leads to him getting hacked up with an ax over a piece of chocolate. All right. Then we move on to the breakfast scene. And this is after Joey gets chopped up. You get the great line from the grandpa. I don't think Joey's going to be joining us today. And I really can't tell what they're eating here because we catch them for some Joe's reason. Set a plate for a dead guy. We, we catch them right here at the end. You're going to have to assume that Cookie made them eggs and bacon and grits, right, Blake? Maybe some breakfast sausages? Yeah, you got to go with the basics at this at this kind of place. I mean, they don't – you can't expect nothing great there, right? Yeah, what's your thoughts right here? We've all seen orange juice in a jug. What do you think about milk in a jug right here? I like it. I like it. It makes me want a glass, to be honest with you, as long as it's ice cold. I don't think that's going to be ice cold very long. They're out in the middle of the effing woods, Blake. You know what? Disgust me. And you, I'm sure... I'm sure they're going to throw in some some fruit, you know? Yeah. All right, so it leads us, everybody, to Demon's Van, and we talked about it last week, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Reggie the Reckless's brother, living in a van, RV van park, whatever you want to call it. He's got enchiladas and egg rolls, Blake, in a van. Yeah, I'm not big on the enchiladas. That's, I think you're an enchilada guy. Uh, I'm a everything Mexican guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not big on enchiladas, uh, but I do love egg rolls. Every kind of egg roll, I love it. Partially retarded and fat is no way to go life go through life. Great Animal House uh, reference right there. I love it. So yeah, I mean, and plus the fact we talked about it last week. They're going through, you know, driving around this van with all this grease bomb food. You know, it smells like somebody's butthole in there. But I agree with you. I love egg rolls, uh, unless it's got cucumber in it. I love egg rolls. I definitely love every type of Mexican food. Now we're moving on to the main event of Friday the 13th, Part 5, Blake, and that's Ethel and the food that she serves right here. You know she's got a chicken coop out back because she makes that old bum clean the shit out of it. She is cutting up one of her chickens to obviously make chicken with. I just think it's really and truly disgusting right here. Uh, they've got it old down. It looks gross in the background. If you look at, look at that shadow in the background, it almost looks like some type of deer horn back there. Blake, what is that? Uh, that's a great question. I've never noticed it before, but listen, don't talk about this stew, Ronnie. Have you ever ate a bad stew? Be well, no, I hadn't got to the stew yet, but I'm getting there. But yeah, the first thing I want to talk about is she says, eat your F and slop. And junior here is eating this slop. And she goes, don't I make the best slop? Who refers to their food as slop, Blake? I mean, that's just gross. For a pig. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. She's saying eat your effing slop because he's a pig? Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. He's an idiot pig. I saw that movie 13 Fanboy, and let me go ahead and throw it out there. It's horrible. But he's not bad in it playing himself. I think he's one of like, the main characters of the movie. I'm sure it's he's, he's not retarded in real life. I mean, it's it's crazy. I though he's such a good actor in this movie that I really thought he was so damn stupid. Turns out Corey Feldman is. Yeah, Corey Feldman definitely Corey Feldman, the only one in 13 fanboy not playing himself because he's ashamed. He'd rather play somebody else. Okay, Blake. Looks like well, what is in this bowl right here? It looks like this might be stew or some kind of soup. It looks like carrots that's falling why is he making this big of a mess too and what's in that tin jug right there blake is that cookies or is that flour oh i like to think it's cookies but f she don't seem like the kind to have cookies on the table for she definitely doesn't seem like the kind that has cookies it looks like some kind of i would guess onions there and that thing beside it but i'm guessing we got some kind of vegetable meat carrot medley right here that is way too thick to be her stew later on. And you can't really see it right here, Blake, but here's Ethel's stew. She's sitting there. She's spitting in it. She's throwing just random vegetables in while her mistake is outside riding around on the bike and getting his head cut off. And then Jason or Roy, whoever you're going to call him, cuts her right in the face with a hatchet, and she falls down into it, squeezes one of the tomatoes and ruins it. So definitely the grossest food in the franchise is from Ethel. 
and I wouldn't want to eat any of it. Blake, you said earlier that you've got, uh, you've never had a bad stew. I would not want to eat this. Yeah, well, I'm not a fan of carrots, but I think the stew would have been good. All those vegetables mixed in. Maybe she cuts up some of that chicken meat and drops it in there too. Get it piping hot. It'd have been good to go. Dude, you know the way she was cooking. Stuff. You know the way she was cooking. That chicken's not done. All right, moving on, Blake. You can't see it because it's a dark picture, but we're on the Friday the 13th, part six. And, of course, we're opening up with a scene of a piece of roadkill in the middle of the road, and it looks like a dog or potentially a coyote eating at it. What kind of animal do you think this is, Blake? What is, what is the animal in the road at the beginning of uh, Friday the 13th, part six? That might be Muffin. It might be Muffin. It's a throwback. Muffin's still out there. CD says Stu would have been good if she didn't cook it. Well, that's absolutely right. So I'm thinking this is going to be raccoon, possibly a possum that we're eating right here, Blake. Who knows? But it's gross. Not many food scenes in Friday the 13th Part 6. And this is the part where I tell you guys I didn't add in the scene where the girls are eating popcorn because I've already had one popcorn scene with the hippie back in part three. Okay. So really when Blake thought of this topic, he brought up this next picture, which is Rick and the sheriff in the police station. When Rick comes in and goes, what the hell's going on with the weather? He goes, we can talk about what's in those containers. What have they ordered out for? And this was going to be an awkward conversation, Blake, if you hadn't made it back, because I would have been sitting here doing what I was doing every time you go out. Hey, Chad, tell me what you think. We should really do a better job of that, Blake, of talking to the chat, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> the question is, Ronnie, there's only two of them, but they got three plates. Well, you know, okay, one of them may be sides. You never know. I think that's what what's going on. I don't know. The real question is what you know, you know, Vinny makes a big point of talking about Rick and his Italian heritage and all that. Do you think he ordered spaghetti or lasagna or something else I rock? Uh possibly. I mean, I like to think that this is hamburger steak and gravy and french fries. What about you? What's well, the 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 Southern in me immediately goes to it's either chicken strips and coleslaw or it's a hamburger steak and gravy and mashed potatoes, like you said, or possibly a salad. All right. And I see a good one right here. A uh, CD is saying it's probably a club sandwich and fries. You do see club sandwiches, Blake, in those containers like that. Yeah. We're saying it's definitely meatballs. Allie's saying she thinks it's a hamburger. And uh, Dillweed says, let's wrap it up, fellas. So maybe maybe uh, each plate is like the main course for both of them, and that last plate is dessert. And that's the question. What kind of dessert did they get? I definitely got pie. <laughs> Great choice. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm definitely like, thinking. Like Cuba Gooden and radio, pie. I was going to say hair pie. Moving on to the next one. Let's go. Friday the 13th, part eight, Blake. There's a diner scene that's fantastic, and they uh, foreshadow that diner scene by showing us the diner and all the people that are in it at the beginning of the movie. But I thought this plate in particular was amazing. You've got two pieces of egg here. It looks like some ham, toast. Blake, please tell me, is that like hash, or what, what is that right there by the utensils? And what is that utensil? It looks like, uh, okay, it's a fork and a knife. I was thinking it was tongs. So what what is this that was eaten right here? Is that hash? What is that? I can't get over the, the disgusting waitress put her cigarette out in the egg. Well, she is disgusting. Well, she probably did it because she saw that tip right there, Blake. What is that? 75, 85? Somebody left an effing penny. Yeah, that's probably Vinny. <laughs> Honestly, Ronnie, that next to the bread, like I'm, I'm looking at a very small picture on my phone. I thought that was like shrimp peelings. 
I mean, I know that's not what it is, but because obviously it's a breakfast, but that's what it looks like from for me. People watching, you know, on a bigger screen, what the hell is that by the eggs? That's a perfect – wouldn't that egg yolk have busted, Blake, by putting a hot cigarette out in it? What's going on there? Not the way it's cooked there. <laughs> but I got some more uh, from this from this particular scene, Blake. We've got the riding crew of the Crystal Lake series here, and they seem to be enjoying what looks to – what do you think is in that bowl? Chat, what's in that bowl right here that this guy that looks like he's wearing a pink miniskirt – on the right of the screen, what do you think he's got right there? He's got a coffee. Uh, this guy on the far left that's never had a woman. Uh, it looks like he's drinking coffee too. And then the whatever that is right there, I think that's a female. She looks like she's drinking coffee. And they're just sitting there watching Jason walk through and beat somebody up. So I think of the gayest drink I can. <laughs> oh, I can't say it. I know what it is. Yeah. Or burn. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so they're saying chili uh nick push says jesus i don't know what's going on right there but yeah it was it was nice of the crystal lake uh riding team to take a break from whatever identity politics they plan to throw in this uh series on peacock to uh, get them something to eat a lot of sugar right there literally let's move on to the next one blake there's jason he walks in everybody looks at him the one thing I noticed right off the bat, Blake, to the right, right here, you got a cool jukebox. Yeah. You don't see many of them anymore like that. But to the left, it made me try, you know, start to question what type of diner is this? Because what you see to the left looks like an old school meat container, but I think this is like a you walk into the diner, you tell them what you want, and they serve it out of the pan right there. You know what I'm talking about? Like they got yeah. two meats down there and a vegetable, and you just pick it out. Yeah, I could see that. I don't. I didn't think New York would have a place like that. Is is the reason I bring it up? New York seems like the place where you're going to go sit down, and you're going to order what you want. Oh man, nah, New York's got tons of places like that. A CD saying it's cold salads and sandwiches in the case. He, a uh, he, she, whatever CD is, pretty spot on when it comes to his commentary tonight. Blake, we're gonna throw him a free membership. Good deal. He deserves it. The big goofball. Cheeseburger, $2. That's the reason I got it. Cheeseburgers are $2. And I'm pretty sure that says stagflation at the top fighter. What's that say? Fellatio fighter? Gelatin fighter? What's that say? Inflation fighter. Oh, the hamburger is the inflation fighter. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I could eat 10 of those. Well, it depends on how big it is. That's what she said. Now, the reason I showed this, because he gets thrown through the window, is look to his immediate left, or I guess our left. You've got those malt cups sitting right there, Blake. So not only is this a diner, not only is this a place where you can go and get a plate lunch or a plate dinner, but also they serve malts, which is pretty freaking awesome. If you look at the top, it talks about the fountain right there, special coffee. I would love to go there. I'd love to go to these old timey diners like this and order a milkshake. I'm a milkshake guy, Ronnie. I'm I'm a chocolate milkshake guy. What's your go to uh, milkshake flavor? Oh, you know what my go to is. My go to is chocolate. If I can't get chocolate, I'm getting strawberry. If I can't get strawberry, I'm getting vanilla. If I can't get any of those, I mean, I'm whatever flavor they got, as long as it's not mint or uh, yeah, any type of mint. I'm totally anti mint. Sound off in the chat. What's your milkshake flavor? Way to include them. Strawberry malts. Uh, here we go, Blake. So we're wrapping it up. We're heading into Friday the 13th. Jason goes to hell. And this stream went to hell a long time ago, Blake. You suggested this. The guy eating the heart at the very beginning of it. Quite possibly the most disgusting thing to be eaten in the Friday the 13th franchise if you don't include ethel stew yeah uh you know I've, I've been a carnivore for almost two years when you're a carnivore you gotta eat head to toe and that does include organs so uh heart would be included in this ronnie uh tommy wilkins says coffee shake oreo when he was high so Daddy, 
I don't, I, you know, part of me just wants to keep on moving. <laughs> this whole scene is so stupid. It, I mean, they never explain why he's drawn to this heart. Is he possessed before he eats his heart? Is there some kind of aura or power around it? It makes no sense. And when he bites into it, I'm wondering if that gag he does in the middle of it is like for real. Like if they really put something that tasted like crap and he like, Argh! because he does some of those in the middle of it, Blake. I don't know. Yeah, he's probably- on. What'd you say? I say he's probably, it's probably a liver he's eaten, like in real life, a liver and he made him sick. I will say this, other than the heart scene, I will go ahead and say right now, Blake, let's let's wait to the end and we'll judge it. But here you have the Voorhees burgers. They're taking full advantage of all the death and, and violence that's taking place there by selling burgers that look like hockey masks. So uh, I'd eat one. Yeah, I would too, for sure. But you're taking a lot of hamburger patty out by doing that. It's got a bo- it's got a damn hamburger with a hole in it, Blake. Yeah, you got to order a double in that situation. Double bacon and cheese. This is from an extended scene from Friday the 13th, Jason Goes to Hell. And I just wanted to pause it right here to look at this wonderful food that she's about to take to her boyfriend, the sheriff. It looks like hamburgers. It looks like sandwiches. It looks like french fries. This is amazing. That's it, Blake. That's going to wrap it up. That's all, folks. So, in the chat, we're going to do a quick, impromptu Peter North poll. Out of all of the Friday the 13th movies, which Friday the 13th movie had the best food? Blake, I'm going to say right now, I'm going to go with Friday. Well, I know you're not supposed to call it Friday the 13th. So, Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. I think overall has the best food, best looking food in the franchise. You've got multiple diner shots of them serving food. And I just used a couple. I mean, I didn't even go into detail about uh, the bounty hunter ordering the Voorhees uh, fries or whatever the hell he ordered. The Jason shake and the Voorhees fries. I'm a mystery box guy. I always have been. I got to go with part six. What is in those three plate lunches, Ronnie? Go. All right. If anybody's got any Friday 13th questions, hit them real quick in the chat while we go through, and then we're going to get the heck out of here and see if we can fix uh, Blake's computer. I don't know what this is right here, Blake, that Nick Bush is talking about. It's probably some kind of drug he's trying over in Amsterdam. Funny, uh, Tiram is like some kind of some kind of chocolate cake thing. Uh, I had it when I was in Colorado. Uh, can't afford it. Yeah, you can. It's not any good. All right. So uh, CD saying egg creams, whatever that is. Uh, strawberry malts. How can you not get hungry watching this? Uh, CD says he's a chocolate shake boy. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Nick Push said it won't let him send a super chat from Europe. Uh, nice lie, Nick. His bank. Uh, <laughs> my bank won't let me send a super chat. <laughs> Allie's saying she agrees with me. Jason goes to hell as the best food. Nick Push says part two, the hot dogs were cooked to perfection. And I think that might have been the best question of the stream, Blake, is how do you like your hot dogs cooked? So. What's next week, Ronnie? You want to decide it right now? Well, seeing Mark in the chair got me thinking, um, favorite cripple from a horror movie. but I. We, okay. Well, I was thinking Franklin from Chainsaw. What, well, dude? It's got to be a Friday the Thirteenth stream. What the hell does Franklin have to do with it? Are you just thinking about another video to put out? Yeah, just more content. Favorite cripples in horror movies? Yeah. Can we add retarded in there with it? Cripples and or retarded. It's the same thing. All right. So I like that idea. In the chat, what are some topics you want to hear us talk about when it comes to Friday the Thirteenth? Blake, real quick, off the top of your head. What is what is the Friday Thirteenth topic for next week? Um, you know we covered favorite hole at scenes this week. We knocked out the food. Uh, I, we, you know, we missed a golden opportunity with it being Easter on Sunday. We should have been. We should have did Jason's best resurrections. Yeah, it was topical. 
that's that's a good one, Ronnie. That might be what we do. CD says we need to do the biggest douche in the series. That's going to be tough for me because I like every character. Biggest douche. I'm going to write that down. Blake, write that down. Biggest douche in the series is actually something we need to do. Uh, what about weirdest characters? No. No? It's all subjective. Uh, best underwater scenes. Uh, Jesus, there's only like two. <laughs> what are you talking about? And here we come with the perverts. Where no, if you, you look, here's the deal. Where would you rather uh, live, Higgins State uh, or the Jarvises? One second, Blake. Perfect opportunity. Uh, if you want to check out the best butts of uh, in horror, Pat and his pack of perverts covered that last week. So you're going to do that. We try to keep it clean here. That's the reason we're talking about doing cripples. Yeah. We'll come up with something, Blake. We can always do. We haven't done this yet, but the next review in our stream is Friday the 13th, Jason Goes to Space. So we could always do a live stream review of Jason X. Best vehicles in Friday the 13th. Best vehicles in Friday. They oh, would all be the majority of like part one. No, it wouldn't. You got Megan's car. You got the. Okay, stop. That's what we're doing. That's the topic for next Friday. Best vehicles. RV? Best vehicles in the Friday the 13th franchise. All right. So this is the okay. part of the chat. <laughs> Go ahead, Blake. What are you laughing about? You got the you got the boat. What are you talking about? The, the, are you talking about the uh the cruise ship? <laughs> How should we do it? Should we just go like like we did like we've done these last two weeks, just go movie to movie, or should we like do a list of our favorite? I say we just go movie to movie. Oh, I'll make the vehicle. I'll make the slides. The oil, right. red oil truck that gives her <laughs> right again. The car that blows the teacher up in Manhattan. Ralph's bicycle. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> this is a great topic. Next week, next Friday, 8 20, 8 30, or depending on Blake's situation, 9 30, we'll talk Friday the 13th franchise best vehicles. So have your list ready. I'll go through all the movies up until like Jason goes to hell. I guess we could use the spaceship and Jason X. Yeah, that's got, that was going to be mine. That's why I was laughing. I was going to say the spaceship. <laughs> oh, real quick, uh, that's a, I'm going to apologize. First off, first apology. Sorry for uh, me being solo at the very beginning of it. Very awkward, very weird. Sorry about all the uh, audio hiccups tonight. Thank you, guys. Uh, fortunate enough, Blake, that we've kept like 20 people uh, watching this the entire stream somehow. So thank you guys for uh, sticking around, dealing with all these issues. Uh, we don't do this enough, but we have a lot of people that pay the channel. And we've got a lot of people that are nearing like one year of uh, paying the channel, Blake. So give me just a second. Let me pull up our stuff. And I want to thank those guys real quick because you never know. The world may blow up tomorrow and we didn't get to thank the people that you know, support the channel. Red Don, Red Don, you never know what's going to happen. Dude, which Red Don were you watching? Uh, both of them. Same time? Yeah. All right, so real quick, Blake, I'm just going to talk about the people that's been here with us a long time and not the people we gifted out stuff to. So, obviously, uh, Darren... He has been a channel supporter for one year, which is freaking amazing. Tommy Knocker, the horror guy, has been a channel member for 11 months. Thank you so much. Jet Vanian, who we don't get to talk to that much anymore. Jet Vanian, a, a solid year of supporting this channel every month. Hoops Hooper for the last five, uh, five months has been a channel member, Jordan Moran for the last two months, Nick Rivers for the last month, uh, Chris Fantasi, who's about to get married, not to a guy, to a woman. 
uh, 11 months supporting this channel. Thank you, Chris. We hope everything's going good with you. Backtrack Cinema has been going uh, for three months supporting the channel, Blake. So we've got a lot of people that dump a lot of hard-earned money into this channel, and it's kind of crazy, and, and we don't do it enough. You know, we don't always do the title card that all the good channels do, you know, thanking everybody, you know, for support. But we do thank the people that take their hard-earned money and give it to us because it helps keep uh, StreamYard in business, Blake, don't you think? Yeah, it helps pay for all the technology I got. <laughs> hey i did have one new uh super chat thing to play you want to see it or you want to wait till next week well you, you can play it are you sure Way to go, dude. there you go i knew you'd like that all right guys hope you guys have a happy easter uh as far as content coming down the road blake what, what shows we got coming uh, we got the bracket show. Let's explain that real quick before people start piling out of the chat. Everybody and their mom are doing March Madness brackets. So we figured we would copy everybody else. Nick Push did one like weeks ago. He was like the one to start the trend. So we're copying Nick Push. We're copying Bud. Uh, we're copying every channel out there. We're going to do a, well, a March Madness bracket in April, Blake. And it's going to pit 32 YouTube channels against each other. We've got them seated. We've got the bracket set. And most channels let the chat choose who advances. Not this channel. Me and Blake will decide who the best YouTube channel is. And if we can't agree, then we have a special guest judge who will break the tie. And we will settle once and for all for 2024 who has the best YouTube channel? And that special guest, RFK. There you go. RFK is going to be here. We're going to talk vaccines. It's going to be great. He's going to tell us about Aaron Rodgers being the vice president, Blake. I can't wait to have him on. And we're going to tell him to clear his throat because we don't know what's up with that voice. If Ronnie and Blake can't make a choice, I'll make it for him. <laughs> Hey, look who's in the chat, Blake. It's Bud. He got out of jail. Look at that sexy human being. Bud, I miss you, man. I miss you. Are we live streaming WrestleMania, Bud? Are we? Huh? It's call dropped. No. All right, Blake. You ready to rock and roll? I've been ready to leave. Well, look. You saved me because I was struggling. All right? We were doing fine. I wanted to come and screw it up. I it was like, uh, in heavyweights when they went to the party and everything started going good. So uh, Ben Stiller had to show up and ruin it. That's what I did. Uh, Bud says he's in, and he also says doing the voice wrong. So I don't know what's going on. Well, I'm no expert. I always love these uh, live streams. You never know exactly when to end them, Blake. 